What up, it's your boy, Incredible Man, and yes, I am back at it again, and this is Black Clover episode 161 review, and oh my gosh, man, it was super captivating, super exciting, exhilarating, all of that great stuff, and then it got emotional. Let's talk about it, man. I don't think I do it good, no, I think I do it great. They would do it if they could, they can't do it, so they hate. Everybody wanna look, but nobody wanna play. Stealing eyes. We knew this going in. War always brings about some casualties and some stuff and some things are going to happen during a war. But this episode was super packed, man, because we get to see, you know, going ham. You know, went in from the very moment that he appeared because he's seen all his Nakama and comrades being hurt and injured and possibly killed. The thing is, because. At the very beginning of this episode, we also see you know kind of having like a well, not you know, but like they showed it for us to see how you know has recently connected with his squad members since he became the vice captain now, so he couldn't really just be kind of standoffish, and that's not him per se, that's just like you know, he's just one of those types of people, and he came across that way to everyone else, but they all looked at him and started to respect him. and even with him becoming vice captain, they started to realize that, you know, well, hey, well, maybe we should incorporate him more. Maybe we seemed a little weird to him. And everyone started to incorporate, you know, the ones that didn't like him, the ones that did. They all started to recognize his powers and respect him and incorporate him into a lot of things now. So he's like, now he's an official member of the Golden Dawn. We know Mimosa and Klaus had already accepted him and a couple of other members, but now we see in this little mini flashback that everybody pretty much was on, on Team Uno now. Like they all was like willing to accept that he was strong, he was capable, and he's the vice captain now. So we, you know, we gotta respect him now. And they done that out of respect, if you will. And we see that through that little mini flashback. So this makes everything else that Uno does in this entire episode so much more impactful and together because we see that with that flashback everyone connected to you know but you know connected to everyone as well so everything that he does is for his squad members in this entire episode and we've already had that whole little concept with asta brewing since the very beginning for asta for you know it was something different because a lot of people saw that his power you know he has uh, the 40 clover grimoire and he's a peasant and all of this other stuff but now that you know you know's actual history and how everything transpired it look it, it <laughs> That's what I mean by this episode, man. It's so freaking fantastic. And if you're not on the Black Clover train, you're missing out because there's so much greatness to behold in this entire series, man, because you got to look at it like this. Realizing you know his history and his past and realizing that he's a noble son, a king, um, but he grew up a peasant that lets him have that nobility power but have that peasant, I guess you could say, mindset. So, like, he sees that everybody, you know, you have to earn your right. You need to step up. You need to treat people better and all that other stuff. You know, because he he, he was raised outside, I mean, in Hage Village, you know, outside the kingdom and everything. So he has both perspectives, I guess you can kind of say, if you will, with you know, And it showcased so much through this entire episode because he's still dealing with everything that he just found out about his nobility. But at the same time, these people that killed his parents appeared in front of him and this dude starts laying everything out and like yeah well we killed the old king and everything and that just set you know off on top of these emotions that he was already combating already from the previous episode finding out that he's a noble son the king of the spade kingdom he's the prince of the spade kingdom dealing with everything that's happening and taking place with the golden dawn and his comrades being injured and hurt you know dealing with a lot of stuff and he's trying to process a lot of things and we see that go off in this entire episode. And he just mollywhopped this dude, man. He tapped into his powers full full force, man. He came he sliced this man up. He cut through dude's magic in him. And it was epic, man. The animation, like I say, is always on point with Black Clover. For some reason, like, they, Black Clover is on it with the Spade Kingdom arc, man. I don't know about anybody else, but I am hyped to the teeth, man. Like, I'm loving every single aspect of this anime, man. Um... We're also dealing with Klaus this episode as well. We get to see Klaus going through some emotions in, uh, how do you pronounce her name? Let, 
uh, the Tole, Letelo, however you want to. Anyway, the chick with the compass magic. But anyway, we see her and Klaus both going through some things this episode and kind of reminiscing on some things as well because Klaus is dealing with the fact that, you know, he know he can't really compare to a lot of the higher-end nobles of the Golden Dawn in magic prowess. And some of these people from the Spade Kingdom because, you know, they tapped into the power of the devils and he can't really compete with them. So we see Klaus going through some things, and we see Atlas, not Atlas, uh, I was gonna th thinking of the, uh, what's her name? Um, Leo Tole, Letole, however you wanna say her name. But anyway, the chick with the compass magic, we see her going through some things as well, you know, cause she was taken over by one of the elves, and she's trying to tap into that power, because we see in a flashback, Vengeance is kinda laid it all bare for all of them. Sure, I know you feel some type of way about being taken over by the elves, but take that power, learn to use it and control it for the Clover Kingdom. And that's what she done. And she used it this episode and we see that and it showcases and we see Yuno coming there to rescue Klaus and, and her at the same time. But Yuno is still tired from his previous battle. So at that point we see everything is kind of going awry, but both of these characters, which is Klaus and the um, compass chick, put in work, they stepped up and their little mini flashbacks kind of led into like that newer development because we see both of them tapping into that power. We see Klaus training in his flashback, very reminiscent of Asta and everything that he went through with Asta. And we see that Asta kind of rubbed off on Klaus and it paid heavily in this episode with Klaus having the stamina and strength to combat this dude. So, so like so many details and, and, and everything just sprinkled about throughout this entire episode, which made it pure greatness. Now, here he with here lies within the emotion part. Because after all that said and done, we come in contact with two um ah, dude, what's, I know I know their names. I'm I'm thinking about so much, man. Um anyway, one of the dark triad members and you know sees him and he just kind of loses it. Because, you know, he's still dealing with a lot of emotions and he realizes that dude has vengeance. Now, Leo, Klaus, and the compass chick, they're there to try to rescue vengeance and take this dude down. But none of them are on his level. And he even goes up another 5% because he sees that, okay, okay, I see that you have the, the wind spirit and you're kind of capable, you're kind of strong. So he goes up another 5%. You know, combats them, but Klaus and the compass chick are completely taken out. They are immediately stabbed with all kinds of bones. You know's holding his own, but once the dude goes up 5%, you know, is a little out of it because he's not quite as strong and he's still a little tired from his previous battle. So there's a lot of stuff going on. And you know's taken out as well. And the entire Golden Dawn compound is completely destroyed. And now comes in the emotion because we see, um, I don't know what, the, anyway, the dude that came from the Spade Kingdom that's there to tell you know about everything, he's on his way and he sees the compound and, it, and that within shows us the compound. And we see all these Golden Dawn members just laid out, just out. There's blood and there's rubble and everything. And we see Belle, and well, we hear her first. We hear Belle crying. Then we see, you know, stabbed along with a bunch of other Golden Dawn squad members laid out, possibly dying. And this is where it comes in with the emotion and what I mentioned at the very beginning of my video. <sighs> War comes in with some stuff. War makes things heavy. There's going to be death in war situations. But even with the, the devil during the um, Elven arc and the elves claiming a lot of lives and stuff, it ended up being a lot of people that we didn't really know, a lot of people that we didn't see, and I hate to say it like this, but a lot of the poorer people and uh, people we weren't really connected to. So it made us feel some type of way, but like, and then it, it didn't, it didn't at the same time, if you kind of understand what I'm saying. But this episode hit different because a lot of the members of the Golden Dawn that we know and came to love, everybody didn't make it out. Vandis was still kidnapped, but he sacrificed the last little bit of his strength and magic to cast magic to save everyone in the Golden Dawn base. He cast the World Tree magic and it, and it lit up and it showcased and everything. And he saved majority of the people. 
but it was only for the people that was on the verge of death. The people that was already dead, he couldn't do anything for. So that's where this becomes emotional and sad and it hits home and it gets, it gets real because a lot of the people that we know now they're dead. Like the Elven Ark was legit and the Elven Ark went in. But the Spade Kingdom Ark is hitting different. But I am loving every aspect, man. I am fully engulfed in everything. And we see that this definitely heavily impacts Yuno because he kind of pretty much breaks down a little bit at the very ending of this episode. And oh my gosh, man. 162 is going... It's, it's, it's like the official start of everything. But, dude, it's it's already started, man. This is your boy, Dick Incredible, man. Don't forget to smash the like button so you can't smash it anymore. Comment down below, and I'll be sure to respond to each and every one of them. And subscribe, but only if you really want to, man. And remember, the anime matters, anime is greatness, and anime is life, man. Peace out. Hey, yeah, I